Preston here again. I hadn't even posted the first video on this channel and a buddy of mine started asking me a few questions about this Predator that uh, I'm putting together. And so I just want to address a couple of the downsides of the uh, Predator Hemi 212cc engine that um, really aren't factors of the engine itself, but just things you might want to keep in mind if you're putting together a build based on this engine. So I'm going to step over to the project area I have set up and give you a tour. Okay, so over here in my little project area, I have a number of parts set up that are going to go on this um, otherwise pretty much stock Hemi 212 uh, Predator engine. This The only thing other than stock that's going on here is this exhaust and little kind of cheap muffler off eBay. Um, I've de-governed the thing internally, fully really assembled to plug these holes. And is that it? Um, different spark plug, nothing super crazy going on, nothing other than just kind of bolting stuff on and off the engine and um, tapping those holes for bolts. So other than that, <clears throat> um, there's no electric starter so far. Um, the switch box as well is not something that comes with the engine by itself. So I've ordered these um, off eBay. These two parts are completely identical to the non-HEMI version. So HEMI, non-HEMI, you really don't have to worry about parts compatibility there. Um, one thing on this box that you do kind of have to think about is if you're gonna bolt this on somewhere, I have noticed over a couple of these builds that you know there, there, is, there are some small variations going on with the, um, the way that these kind of flanges, uh, these little, uh, pinch that together. Um, the, the way these are intended to bolt on to something. So on some of my other boxes, these, I, I never really actually mount these to the engine itself. I always end up bolting them on to some other piece of steel um, or a frame. And there's some just slight variations here to be aware of. If you have to cut a little bit of this material off here, it's not a big deal, but just be aware of it. Um, now the big downside in terms of parts compatibility with the Hemi is these two parts here. So this is the replacement flywheel that fits the Hemi. It's a Kohler part. Um, and second, is the stator assembly. I believe the stator assembly is the same. I just happened to like to pair those two together. So I just got the color part with that as well. Um, here's the deal. The stator, um, you, or excuse me, the, uh, <clears throat> the flywheel is not something you're gonna find a lot of information on online. There are definitely a couple of threads. There's people saying, hey, why is this, you know, why is the flywheel off my non-hemi not compatible? Um, I don't really know why they made that decision, but the taper on these flywheels is just slightly different to make them not compatible. Um, you can verify yourself, <clears throat> verify that yourself if you have non-hemi at home. Um, yeah, again, I don't know why they chose to do that. Um, it wouldn't be a big deal just to order one of these things, except that the cost of this part plus the cost of the stator. Um, I got I like the dual coil ones myself just for electric power because uh, I am running some accessories up here. Let's grab this out of the box. So these two parts by themselves, or excuse me, together, plus shipping and tax and all that stuff, is about the same cost as the entirety of the engine itself. And that is just insane. I mean, it, it, there's, there's got to be some sort of knockoff or some other you know, white label version of this that you can get. But um, the cheapest I've found these for is probably about 60 bucks or so, right when the uh, Hemi version of the Predator came out. Since then, it's, the prices seem to have gone up a little bit. I don't know if there's a cheaper source of these, but it's just kind of insane that the cost of the entire engine you know, is the same as these. So um, I like to tell people, if you're gonna put together like, a reasonably performing um, build of one of these things, you need to plan to spend, spend maybe like 350 bucks or so. Now you can, the sky's the limit, you know, but um, the cost of this by itself is about $100 after you get done shipping it to yourself. So that's the big thing to be aware of. Um, the other thing I want to, just point out is the gasket sets. Um, it's, it seems to be pretty well recognized that the gaskets are not the same on the Hemi and the non-Hemi. Um, you know, obviously with the head, those gaskets are going to be different, and the, you can see the valve cover um, gasket is going to be a little different as well. Um, it's not a super big deal. Uh, the downside is that it's, it can be a little hard to find these gasket sets for a decent price. I get them off eBay from a guy um, <laughs> one day I just went online to try to find one from the same guy. I couldn't find really any uh, that were at you know a decent price, like less than 20 bucks um, off eBay. I emailed the guy and he listed 50 more. I don't know where he gets them from. Or if he just probably imports them in, in bulk from China. Um, but anyway, if you're in a pinch, you can use a non-hemi gasket um, to put your case back together. If you're in a bind, um, you do have to shave off a little bit of material. I think it's up here towards the top. Um, it is not a perfect fit. I've done it before just because I really didn't want to wait. Um, I forget what I was doing, but I ended up using a non-hemi uh, uh, gasket on, on a, not this hemi, but another one. 
and it does work. Uh, you may end up with leaks at some point. I just, I, I don't recommend doing that. If you are getting one of these, definitely pick up a couple of these gasket sets on eBay in advance, because after you go through all your break-in procedures, you know, you're probably gonna have worn some areas um, of these semi-reusable gaskets, and you're gonna probably wanna replace them anyway. So just go ahead and do that. Other than that, um, you know, most people are not gonna end up doing porting work on the head or doing anything super crazy in here. If you end up changing your springs, um, there's really no downside to that. The springs that uh, it seems like most people like and I like as well, they're, they're 18 pound. And those are really just drop-in replacements. There's nothing you know, fundamentally incompatible, at least that I've noticed with putting uh, in those same springs in the Hemi versus non-Hemi, even though the rockers are a little bit different, but you know, mechanically they do the same thing and I haven't noticed a problem. Anyway, so those are just the uh, two minor parts compatibility issues that you need to be aware of. And I will post this in the video description, but if you're looking for one of these flywheels, uh, here's the part number right there. Um, go ahead and just, you know, search for that online or your favorite small engine, you know, part supplier, you'll be able to find it. Other than that, if you find a better price, please let me know because I do want to, I do purchase these once in a while. Um, and it would be great not to drop a hundred bucks on this. Thanks, bye. One minor addendum that I'd like to point out um, that I mentioned about these switch boxes um, here in the, the one seater. Uh, I mentioned that these little flip up dealy bops on the sides here that are, you know, just kind of bent from the steel, um, they may or may not fit your particular application. So if you can, you'll definitely save yourself a few minutes of, of cutting or trimming. If you can find one that's gonna fit exactly how you want it to. This particular box I ordered, the picture didn't match the description and I can't actually get it around this one inch steel without trimming some of that. It's just a minor inconvenience, but something to be aware of. Also, when you're ordering these things, they, they do come from different manufacturers. You know, there's all sorts of different clones of these things. They typically do not ship with wiring instructions. And by and large, at least the ones I've gotten have had wires of every flag in the universe here. Um, the, it, when you find instructions, definitely don't trust the uh, diagrams you see to color match exactly what you received. Um, it, I swear, some days they, it seems like they just pull random colors out of the box and put in whatever gauge is, is going to fit it. Now, a few of these are for grounding out. I think this is a, for grounding out your ignition coil. Um, I believe one of these is for the battery, another is for the stator, and uh, what's the other one for? I don't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, um, yeah, definitely get a diagram of what it should look like, but don't trust the colors. And when you wire that in, you may have to extend some of these wires a little bit. It's not a big deal to do that. What you probably want to do is take off the screw in the back of this. All of these somehow solder in. Typically, from all the ones I have, they're very poorly soldered. These, bo these boxes are really cheap. Um, and then just probably fix some of the soldering so it doesn't jostle free when you're bouncing over stuff. And uh, just, you know, extend them out. Put, I like to put some of this tube, whatever that's called, this uh, wrapping stuff to protect the wires a little bit more from water and from, uh, you know, flying shrapnel from cutting the wires while you're driving it. And uh, once you do that, it should fit more or less what you're looking to do. Um, so good luck.